So for those of you who have been watching my channel, you know I made this little icon generator application. But recently I had this idea of like, can I also kind of use all the code that I've spent a lot of time working on? And what I managed to do within like a, a day, I won't even say it's like maybe three, four hours of work, is I managed to create a new type of SaaS product using all of, almost all the same code. And I bought a domain and it's called backgroundcutter.com. Now, again, this is a work in progress. But I wanted to kind of highlight on some of the benefits you can get with like having a fully finished project where you can go and like grab code samples from. It's always going to be much easier to do that because it's fresh in your mind. You understand what all the code does because you wrote it yourself and it's just accessible to you in your own private Git repo or whatever. So obviously, as you can tell, this is literally a copy and paste of my other product, right? And I basically just remove some of the stuff that I'm not interested in at this point in time. I might add it back in later on. But some cool things I want to point out is that this icon was actually generated using my icon generator, right? So like I don't have to spend much time trying to think of an icon. I just use my icon generator, you know, paid about a dollar worth of credits, like find something that looked good, loaded up in GIMP, modified the color of the X a little bit, and I think it's good enough. So what this SaaS product allows you to do is remove backgrounds from images, right? So so let me just demo that and then I'm going to talk about like the roadmap of what I plan to maybe add in the future. Honestly, I don't even know if this is a SaaS product worth working on. It's also like another online service that like charges $39 a month and like they limit how many images you can remove. Anyway, let's just demo this. So, right, so let's go to Unsplash. I found this image of some balloons. I'm going to try an image with like, you know, a, kind of a distinct difference between the background and the foreground. I'll just go ahead and put this here. I'll say balloons, save that. Let's go back over here and I'll copy that in. Okay, now this is an AVIF. I don't know if this will work with that format. Let's just try it anyway. I'll click upload image. And again, this is probably gonna do cold starting. Um, it has to spin up a, yeah, this is not gonna work with AVIF. So, you know, I'm just testing live, testing my stuff live. Now, why is it not in an actual like PDF? Let's see. All right, there we go, we got a JPEG. Let's try it again. Go ahead and just uh, overwrite that one with something new. Click upload and see what happens. Okay, so this image obviously sucked. Again, this this video, I'm not trying to promote this. This is a work in progress, a proof of concept, but it does better on some images where, let's go back here and let's just find like a person standing. How about that? Like this one, it'd probably work really well with. This one would work well with. This one would probably work really well with. I haven't tried one with two people. Let's try this one. I'll type in, uh, instead of saving as, I'll download. All right, let's just see how it works with this. Upload the image. Click upload, test that out. I'm at the point now that I think I have too many different side projects. Like I'm trying to work with this YouTube channel. I got my icon generator side project. I got this side project. Uh, I have this other side project that I'm working on with a client. Um, this one worked pretty good. So it basically was able to remove all of the trees and whatever from the background of that. So I'm kind of impressed with that image. Let's just do one more um, to kind of test this live with you all. Let's try to think of something else. How about a dog jumping? I mean, it's gonna obviously do this one great. Let's just do, go ahead and download this one and go ahead and try it one last time. Cool, yeah, I mean, that works pretty good. Just go ahead and grab that, put it in a new tab, open that up. So with a little bit of tweaking, as you can tell, like right there, like it wasn't able to remove whatever that was in the background. But I would say this is actually a lot easier to like bring into your project versus using like the magic wand editor or using some type of like cutout. I do think there is like a little glow around the images. So I'll have to like figure out how to maybe work around that. All right, so I'm gonna show you how the secret sauce is actually made because I don't like keeping that stuff from you. So all I basically did was I grabbed this guy's repo. This is MIT license. I don't know what the hyphen zero means. So I probably need to like go check that. But uh, all I did was grabbed his code. He has like a Python script. He has a Docker file and I wrapped that and got it deployed using SST. And then I pass it an S3 file location. This thing reads from the S3 bucket, processes the images, and then it pushes that image that's been processed back to the S3 bucket. And that is what we see over here. Okay, so the user clicks upload, that goes to an S3 bucket, kick off a Docker container to process the image. Once it's done, it uploads a new image here. And I believe if we just inspect these, I think this one's called like something scaled or process or something. Let's look at this real quick. Yeah, this one's called no underscore BG underscore and then the ID. So it's not really sophisticated backend, but that's how it kind of works. 
So if you wanted to do this for yourself, I mean, you can just grab this repo and kind of set up the th same stuff. Um, and I believe this is actually built on top of something called Rim BG, which is, I th believe, doing the heavy lifting of all the background removal, right? So you, you pass an image and it does exactly this. So you look at this project over here and obviously you think it's really cool, but honestly, I didn't do anything. I just integrated stuff. I just connected some pipes together and let the images flow through and we get this output. That's just like the first thing I've tried doing. If you go to replicate, you can actually, I think, find other models like remove BG. Let's see if there is a back on removal. Yeah, it looks like there we have the rim BG here, but I wonder if there's a, yeah, there's one called ModNet. Let's look at this. I guess the point I'm getting at here is that like, you can play around with different models and try to find the ones that work the best. Or if uh, you're really talented, you can go and try to train and write your own models. The cool thing about Replicate is that if you click on any of these public things, you can go to the GitHub repo, and they have all of the PyTorch code typically that tells you exactly how they're doing this, right? So if you go here, this is a predict PY file, you read through this, and oh, it looks like they're just using BG remove as well. So I don't know if this is doing anything special. I think the main difference is that this is using some type of like maybe control net to make it do better background removals. So I can always kind of hook into this if the approach I'm doing is just not going to work that well. But, but enough talking. The plans for this project is I want to set up an API, right? I haven't actually made a service where people can sign up and generate API keys. And then from their own services, they could hit my API to basically remove background from their own images, right? So that's kind of like where I'm trying to take this is like, okay, we got a cool UI where people can upload their own images and maybe like the public facing user, like a non-developer user could use this. But I want to take this further to allow developers to kind of integrate with the service and they could buy, a you know, a bulk or a batch of credits that every time that their service were to remove some backgrounds, it just decrements their credits, right? I know a lot of people do subscription-based services. I might actually look into that as well so that you might have to have like some type of monthly subscription to continuously integrate with my service. But again, I use everything with like AWS serverless. So it's like operation costs are super minimal. Anyway, just wanted to kind of do a little dev vlog sharing with you what I've been working on. Um, if you guys like this, give me a thumbs up. Maybe I'll keep making little vlogs like this. And uh, like always, I got a Discord channel. You're welcome to join. If maybe you yourself are working on some type of SaaS product and you just want to find a community to kind of talk to about it, feel free to join my Discord. The link is in the description below. All right, have a good day and happy coding.